What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, it's about that time. You know, in the last video on the Raptor 700, we put the Tusk adjustable with rear axle on the quad. Why do I keep saying rear axle? The axle. There's not a front one, so it's the only axle. There's no rear axle. You know what I meant. So, it's now time to finish the ensemble and widen the front now as well. So, how we're sitting right now is, and a few of you guys, you're going to notice a few things different on this quad. Uh, I have a huge, huge video that I've been filming, like I told you guys. I just haven't had time with a whole bunch of bolt-on stuff. I got it all laid out here on the table. I'm going to show it to you guys. And there's some of the things we're going to go ahead and tackle now, but the graphics kit is off the quad. Uh, it's got an aftermarket oversized radiator on it right now, which... I, if I would have thought this far ahead, I wouldn't have put it in yet because of the brake lines that we're going to be swapping. But, <sighs> been working all day, guys. This, this shirt is normally light gray, like this section here. I am soaked in sweat. Cleaned the whole yard, emptied most of the garage out, cleaned the garage. I just couldn't work like that anymore. I still have to organize my tools. I collected them from everywhere and just threw them in boxes and I got to go through all that stuff. Here's the Raptor right now. You guys saw it in the last video. We put the Tusk axle on, like I said. Um, here's the aftermarket radiator that I put on there. You guys know I usually do that to all of my liquid cold quads. It's a GPI radiator. It already had the blue silicone hoses on there, so I didn't need to order those. But in this video today, let's check out these A-arms that I got for this quad. It's going to be plus two on each side, plus four overall. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to look mean, man. It's going to look like a little grasshopper. It's going to be sick hell of a lot more stable and these new a-arms from you guys already know who i had to call teamalbaracing.com you they're my go-to with stuff like this guys they're extremely affordable i just ordered these like four days ago and they're here already I, you can't beat it I, I i got something else coming for the lt250r it'll be here tomorrow it was a steering stem by lone star i ordered it two months ago it's just coming in now tomorrow um, we're going to go ahead and throw those fast flex bars if you guys can see them in the background. We're going to throw those on the Suzuki too. I got a plus two steering stem for that. Um, that's the only thing I really don't like about that quad is the uh, handlebar height. But anyway, stick around. Let's unbox these uh, A-arms. I didn't even open them yet. Right here. Still taped up. All I did was cover up my address and stuff. <sighs> stick around, man. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so before we open up the A-arms, this is the pile of stuff that I still have to put on this quad. I know I went a little overboard with blue anodized shit, but, you know, whatever. When I, whenever I blow this quad up and we go to a big board, a 770 or 780, 90, whatever friggin' big board they make for that thing, obviously that's what we'll do. Uh, found out a little something else with that quad. Something's, uh not bolted down and i don't know how the hell it was running the way it is but i'll show you guys when we get over there and start taking the plastics off because i'm going to take the front plastics off to uh so you guys can get a better angle and see how these a-arms and everything bolt on and go together but 2022 takeoff shocks from a yfz 450r i mean clean cleanest set i ever found uh, they're they're brand new i mean look, look at these up close guys there's not even scratches on the plastic guards in there or nothing. So, definitely had to scoop those. Paid a pretty penny for those, but not much more than you would pay for an older set. So, I bought these before I even decided to order those A-arms. Damn, that thing looks good, doesn't it? Whew! Anyway, bought these before I ordered the A-arms, not realizing, honestly, that they are so much longer than the stock Raptor shocks. After I found that out, I was like, all right, let me try these. This is a lowering kit. I figured this would take up the extra length and keep it at the same height that the quad is at now. Nope, not going to work, but that's okay. These also fit Hondas or whatever, so I'll just keep those around. Um, I ordered these will be going on with the A-arms today. These are a BFE fam, chromoly tie rod ends. They're usually the brand that I order when I do tie rod ends. Um, these I had on the shelf, some brake line clamps. Um, Alba was supposed to uh, uh, include a set of brake lines for me uh, that I asked for. I'm sure they're in the box. Those guys always come through 100%. Great guys to deal with, too. 
So basically in this video, it'll be the brake line clamps, the brake lines, the new tie rod ends, the A-arms, and these YFC 450 shocks, which you need long travel A-arms for, like I said. Wait till you guys see how Alba's got these new A-arms set up, guys. You can either run your stock length shocks or you can go to long travel shocks. I'll show you all about it when we open up the box and get it set up, and I'll show you guys exactly what we're talking about there. Uh, we're also going to put these dust shields on. These uh, replace the plastic ones that go around the brake rotor in the front. You guys will see what I'm talking about when we get into that. Uh, let's see, what else can we throw on in this video? I'm also going to throw on this uh, key bracket um, because this stuff, the carbon fiber grill and gas tank cover, no longer staying on the quad, but we're not going to put this on in this video because I'll do that when we do the rest of the stuff. I got a whole brand new graphics kit, like a 15,000 piece graphics kit. It's ridiculous how many pieces come in there. Um, what else we got? Uh, another video that will be by itself is the clutch cover gasket, new clutch uh, plates and its fibers, new springs, and that little whining noise that's coming from the uh, the bearing in the clutch. Got an OEM replacement bearing for that. So we'll go ahead and take care of that in another video. But here's all the other stuff I got, guys. A clear timing, uh, the cam cover, you know, the oil fill plug, timing inspection caps, the oil filter cover. Check out this shifter, man. This thing is sick. Foldable shift lever, you know, in case you... I mean, there's Nerf bars on the quad, so you're probably never going to hit that, but... You can adjust the length of it and everything. This is by Nice CNC. All this stuff is pretty much by Nice CNC up here, except for a couple things like the Team Alba Racing rear grab bar and uh, you know the shocks. Obviously, most of this is all Nice CNC. I think that this is JFG and this is JFG Racing. These two items here. We got a billet water pump cover, dipstick. Uh, I'm gonna throw an hour meter on it. This I bought. This is a, a plug for the pivot bolt nut. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to use this because I got frame guards and they cover that, but you know, whatever this is here, you guys already know if I got some extra parts, we'll probably do a giveaway or something. Um, I got a new uni filter, Yamaha lube, Yamaha oil filter. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, getting, like I said, we're getting rid of the carbon fiber grill and, uh, tank cover. I got OEM gloss black, brand new. Going to make the quad look way cleaner, and the graphics kit's going to tie it all together. White, black, and blue. Whole quad's white, back, black, and blue. You guys know, brand new wheels and brand new tires on it as well. You guys will see that in the video when we put all this little stuff on. All right. Let me, uh, we're going to unbox this, guys, and I'm going to go in and take a shower, excuse me, and chill. And uh, tomorrow, we'll install all this stuff. So, let's get it, like I said already. All right, guys, let's unbox these A-arms from Team Alba Racing .com. So, take a razor blade, obviously. If I can manage doing this. <laughs> Try not to get the blade too deep into the box and scratch stuff, because, you know, even though we're going to beat the crap out of this stuff out in the woods, we do not want to scratch stuff. So, Shook the box up a little bit. I mean, you could tell stuff was moving around, but not to where it was going to get damaged. We got my front brake line. Since we're running an extended A-arm, we're going to need longer brake lines, obviously. Sometimes you can get away with running your stock ones, but you're really, like, stretching them to the max, and you don't want to do that. Uh, aftermarket brake lines, guys, they're, they're cheap, you know? And they are they don't expand like your stock rubber lines will if you really grip down on it. Um, some of you guys probably know what I'm saying. Some of you probably don't good thing to do to your vehicle too if you're uh you know doing like road courses or whatever or just just want to upgrade stuff but we're not talking about cars yet over the winter we'll be doing one but not right now all right so let's take these all out first we'll put them all on the table here got cardboard between each each individual part in here it looks like these are the two lower ones Hope you guys are in the shot here. Let me just double check. I don't want you guys to miss anything here. We'll put this down. Here's what's in the bottom of the box. So we got look like our spacers and end caps and stuff. These are some of these like these aluminum pieces. Those are for adjusting your caster. We'll go over that when we get down to uh, installing them and let you guys know which setting is which. So we got those. We'll put those to the side. 
We got our brand new plus two tie rods, which we're going to be putting those BFE fam tie rod ends on. If you guys are going to order these, you will need to order tie rod ends. Um, you could reuse your stock ones, but the way I look at it is if you're going to put all brand new stuff on, you might as well do brand new tie rod ends too. It does come with the ball joints though for the upper and lower arms. We'll put those to the side. You guys can see what's in here. I'll pull these out and put them on the table here. We've got our ball joints and the two upper A arms here, each individually packaged, wrapped up in bubble wrap. Here's the other one. I'm uh, pretty sure you guys will need to uh, remove the steel rod that's in the uh, the upper A arm, the part where it bolts to the frame, and reuse that for these. Or you could, you know, go on RockyMountainATV.com and order a new one, new set. We also have our uh, instructions. We'll go over while we're installing these, and I will reiterate this to you guys. All right, box out of the way. All right, so let's get into cutting these open here. Put our directions to the side here. I think we'll go ahead and open the upper ones first. I'll just go ahead and rip this tape open. And gloss black powder coat. Oh, I was wrong, guys. Here are the rods. They come with the new ones now, the uh, sleeves that the bolts go through. Um, I think the older style of Alba racing ones, or maybe I'm mixing that up. Alba, if you guys are watching, first off, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Um, but I believe the older uh, models uh, of the A-arms that you guys made, I think you had to reuse your stock sleeves. I, I think I'm wrong on that, but just, uh, you know, we'll figure it out as we go here. All right, so the one we just opened, guys, you got your grease zerk ready to go. Comes with a nice little cap. Keep dirt and stuff out of it. Like I said, the sleeves in there. There's new Delrin bushings already pressed into the arms here. So that's the same for all four arms. We'll open up the other upper, or yeah, the other upper A arm here. I'm like a little kid in a candy store, guys. I love upgrades like these. You know, little bolt on stuff like the other stuff I just showed you guys. That's cool too, but you know, when you're doing stuff that really increases the performance and the way your quad handles, no better feeling, man. Especially after you've been riding it for a little while. So, those aren't scratches, guys. That's stuff from packing material. Um, ball joints, we got those in there. I'm not going to take those out yet. Get rid of this other piece of cardboard. All right, so let's go for one of the lower ones, guys. These are the Gull Wing style arms, Desert MX, Long Travel, whatever you guys want to call them. They got a bunch of different names depending on the company. But I mean, look at the quality on this, man. Beautiful gloss black powder coat. You know, you can't really go wrong. Everything comes, uh, all the Dalrin bushings are already pressed in. The steel sleeves are in there, all zip tied together so it doesn't fall apart in the package. Grease zerks on each end with these little covers on there, which are nice to have. Keep, you know, dirt and stuff off of there. Put your grease in, wipe it off, put your cap back on. You don't have to worry about dirt and stuff sticking to it. Got the Alba Racing logo right there on the arm. So these will sit like this on the quad. I think I told you guys this already. These are plus two. Uh, these are made out of chromoly. I believe 4130, I believe, off the top of my head. But let me uh, open the rest of this stuff up, guys. Lay it out. And I'll get you a nice view and show you everything. So here's everything out of the packaging, guys. We got our two uppers, two upper A arms. We have both of our tie rods. You guys seen this little bag with the spacers and stuff in here? got that these are the ball joints for the upper a arms uh the lower a arms already come with the ball joints in um here's the lower a arms obviously directions over there i breeze through them real quick uh you guys are going to want to look at your factory service man manual for your raptor 700 or banshee or trx 450r or whatever you're installing these team alba racing a arms on you will be going by your stock uh torque specs for everything um, the only ones that get added in there are the torque specs for the back of the, uh, ball joint nuts, the nuts that go on the back there and the pinch nut. So, um, I believe it was, what did it say here? Uh, 45 foot pounds for the, do, 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 where are we here? The lower ones, 45 for the lower and then 50 for the upper A arm ball joints. So we'll go over that. Like when we're putting it in, um, this 
these do not come with the Team Alba Racing A-Arms. I bought these separately from Team Alba Racing. And guys, just to let you know, I don't get this stuff for free. I get a very, very, very small discount. And um, so I'm not constricted to say I like something when I don't or anything like that. I have free reign to say what I feel about these. Um, I also have a promotional code for Team Alba Racing. 10% uh, off, so if you call them and order anything, let them know you guys heard about them from Garage MC. Matt, um, my promo code is GMC10. Save yourself 10% off your whole order. You could order just one thing, 10 things, everything, 10% off your whole order. Uh, that promotional code is ongoing. It keeps going and going and going. It's not just going to run out and then not be available one day. Um, so, let's see here. Now that I showed you guys all this stuff, I am going to finish putting my tools away, and then we'll pull the Raptor in. I'm going to put it up on the jack, take the front wheels off. I'm also going to pull the plastics off. Um, I'll give you guys a quick rundown on how everything comes off the quad, but mainly this is for the installation of these A-arms. But like I said, I'll give you a quick rundown. It's, it's real simple, man. I'll, I'll tell you guys now. Um, obviously, you're going to want to take your wheels off. You want to take your uh, drain your brake fluid out and take your brake calipers off. Disconnect the lines from the calipers. You're going to want to uh, get the spindles out of the ball joints that are on your factory A arms. You want to break those free. Um, they have you know a, a pickle fork or a ball joint press tool, or sometimes they just come apart. Um, you know sometimes they come apart. Not often though. Just you know by hand. Uh, I'm also going to be removing the tie rods and tie rod ends i'm only going to take off the uh i'm just going to leave them whole take them off at the nut at the bottom of the tie rod end in there and then also where it connects to the spindle in here right here um we're not going to be reusing any of that uh then after uh we have our spindles and brake calipers off those will be the only parts i will be reusing um, I was right guys. There's another sleeve inside your a arm your upper a arm here You will need to reuse that with these a arms um, It's pretty common especially with Yamaha's with that sleeve that they put in there But no big deal and then after all that stuff's off guys. I'm going to unbolt the shocks. It's a 14 and a 17 millimeter on these uh, on Honda's they're 14 millimeter front and back top and bottom um, and then unbolt the a arms and pull them off also going to have to reuse our dust caps on the Yamaha. So, all right, let me get set up, guys, and uh, start pulling this thing apart. All right, guys, I got everything set up here. I already took my front wheels off. I know I said I was going to call it a day and then continue tomorrow, but, it, you know, this I like to do this shit. So, you know, I actually get enjoyment out of doing this. So, um... Yeah, I took the front wheels off already, and I'm getting ready to disconnect the brake lines. I'm looking at this hoping I don't have to take this radiator back off, because these kind of suck on these to get on and off with the fan there, and everything's all just jammed into that little spot. But um, I'll give you guys a I'll show you guys a couple things taking it apart that, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys know exactly what you're doing, and you're just watching this for entertainment, which is cool. I do the same thing. Um, even though I don't agree with the way a lot of other people do stuff, but you know, they probably don't agree with the way I do stuff. That's just such as life. You know what I mean? It is what it is, guys. I'm not a certified mechanic. This is just my hobby. Um, I'm talking way too much in this video and we haven't done a damn thing yet. So I'll shut up now. All right. So taking the brake lines off of this, uh, you know, you got your 12 where the banjo bolt is. Uh, there's an 8 millimeter bolt that holds in this plastic bracket. This plastic bracket also clips, if you guys can see that, you can see the wear mark on the A-arm. It clips around it there, and then it clips around the back of it the same way, right here. So, you just, you know, it's just plastic. You just pull it off, pick it up, so now it's flopping around. Um, I had to take the front bumper off. Could you probably do it with it on there? Yeah, but... Speaking of the front bumper, uh, this is a Team Alba Racing bumper as well. Um, Alba, somebody that had this quad before me spray painted this, so if you could, I, I, I would like a new bumper, please, in black. Thank you. All right. Um, same thing as I always do, guys. I took the plastics off for you. This way we don't have any blind spots, and you can see everything without me having to give you some funky camera angle. Um, I put all the bolts back where they go, even, you know... 
the stuff that I'm obviously not going to be using. They go right back in there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these A-arms. There's no play in them, no nothing. I'm just upgrading. So I will put these in the Alba packaging and then uh, lie to somebody on eBay and sell them to them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just going to store the stuff in the box that, you know, our new stuff came in because I like to keep all my OEM parts for quads. Or if I get another one of these that has something damaged, which you guys know I just might have three or four of these by the end of the year. It's just, you know, I got a problem buying quads. So we'll get that YFZ450 too and another one. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, all right. What the hell was I just saying? Guys, I'm like, I'm fried, man. This past month has just been crazy with work and shit. I'm, I'm like toasted. I should be chilling out, but I'm not. I just can't seem to just sit around. But anyway, all right, man. I'm going to uh, start cracking all the bolts free on this. This way, everything is just ready to pull apart, and I can show you guys real easily without you sitting there watching me with a ratchet for 15 minutes. I'm going to break all these free and get them all loose, and then I'll pick back up with you guys and show you how... Well, I'll show you at least one side because obviously it's the same for the other. So I'm going to start draining my brake fluid now. I'm going to disconnect it up here. Um, the OEM brake lines has a little clip here, kind of like the way your, your brake lines clip in your car. Um, I will see if I can run the new ones through the same mounting point, at least just to hold it. I know it won't clip together, but um, I'm going to see if I can fish those out of there. They also go to the splitter down here where the new team alba racing splitter is going to go it comes out the top and then these are press fit into this t so we'll have to at least disconnect it from one side and then pull it through the frame to get the uh the t part of the brake line off of the oem stuff Alrighty, guys was not too bad nothing was stuck without i mean you know a couple of the, the spots on the knuckles and the inner tie rods i had to tap them a little bit but not enough to damage anything um the lower ball joints on the factory stuff I had to tap on just the outer edge here just lightly with a ball peen hammer you don't want to use a claw hammer uh, ball peen is more for hitting other metal items with um, if you don't believe me look up uh, two hammers smacking together no uh, pun intended um, but look that up you ever see two hammers shatter it's crazy so you want to use a ball peen or do whatever you want I don't care um, Everything came apart real easy, so everything's all laid out. I'm going to do exactly like I said, guys. I'm going to call it a night here. A um, little tip for you. I always uh, zip tie a paper towel around the ends of the brake lines because uh, brake fluid is corrosive, and you don't want it to peel anything off or ruin any paint or anything like that. Even with these parts, like, granted, they're just going in a box, but, you know, they're in really nice shape still. They're perfectly fine. So, all right. We'll pick back up tomorrow, guys. I'm going to go chill and uh, watch YouTube, so see you in the morning. What's going on, guys? Next day now. We got another package in, but it's not for the Raptor 700, but I think I'm going to film a real short video unboxing this, you know. Just so you guys can see what it comes with. Um, this is for the LT250R. It's a Lone Star Plus 2 steering stem. Uh, it's a few bucks and a little bit of a wait to get it. But, yeah. So, let me pause filming these A-arms. Be sure to check the video out I'm going to film right now. Unboxing this Lone Star steering stem for the LT250R. Quad racer. Alright, so another disgustingly humid day here in lovely, toxic New Jersey. Um... <laughs> I started doing the left side of the quad, guys. I'm going to do one full side and get that done, and then I'll share the uh, right side with you. Obviously, it's the same thing for both sides. So I'll give you a quick little sneak peek, but I'm going to clean up the knuckles. i got to take the hubs off of the knuckles. I want to get all that stuff nice and clean. Plus, they got to come off anyway so I can put those uh, nice CNC dust uh, rotor guards on there, these here. Hubs have to come off the knuckles to put these on. Uh, it's a good thing I'm doing it. The plastic dust shields that are on there now are like loose and flopping around. Um, so I got the bottom A arm and the top A arm on the left side, and then I took out the bracket that I'm going to show you guys all about with these Team Alba Racing uh, A arms that you can use with either your standard shocks or long travel shocks. 
being that I went to the 2022 YFZ 450R front shocks, they're a considerably con consider considerable amount longer than uh, the stock Raptor 700 shocks. So I have a stock shock right here. I'm gonna put this on the bench. I'll show you guys the length difference here. All right, so I'm gonna need these here in a second, tie rod ends. So here's the YFZ shock. So you guys can see just how much longer, let me put this down without scratching it. So you guys can see how much longer this shock is eye to eye. Stop rolling away. Get over here. All right, so we're matched up with this one. Just about right there. So here's the length difference. So this is why in the beginning of the video I said I was gonna try and put uh, the lowering kit on the quad. I figured moving the shock bracket the lower mount point that much further away would have accounted for this extra, what's that, like an extra two, two and a half inches there? Yeah, it didn't, wasn't going to work out that way. I probably could have forced it together, but, you know, we're not going to do that. Here's the stuff I just unboxed for the LT250R. You guys should check that video out. That'll, this, the video unboxing this, it's just an unboxing video, but, you know, we used to do unboxing videos all the time, so figured I'd throw one out. Um, I'm going to upload that later on today. It's going to be a little bonus video for the week, but... Here's how we're sitting already. So you can see the long travel shock or the YFZ 450R front shock bolts straight directly in to this mounting point here. This is the bracket that comes from Team Alba Racing. You'll notice it's got that little nipple on the back. That's what this other cap here is for. That goes on the bolt and takes up that space that holds the lower ball joint in. But if you were to run your standard shocks, this would go into that bolt, and then where the YFZ shock is bolted through here, that bolt goes through this hole on this bracket, and you can see the difference there on where it gives you your mounting point. This way you could run your stock shocks, but, you know, that's not what we're doing. But, really cool idea. These these ARs from Team Alba Racing, guys, they, he, pay attention to what I'm saying closely. They're the best on the market at this price point considerably cheaper than like you know a hauser or a lone star a arm of that such made out of the same stuff guys 4130 chromoly yeah there's differences like uh i know with the hauser ones they have the caster <clears throat> knob that you can adjust these you'd have to pull the bolt out and swap the spacers if you want to switch the caster you know make your quad steer faster or slower I just have it in a neutral position. We'll go over that when we put the other set on when I do the right side of the quad with you guys. But I'm going to pull these apart and get these all cleaned up. I was just doing a preliminary, you know, soaking down with LA's Totally Awesome and scrubbing them a little bit. And I'm going to pull those all apart now. Um, this isn't what this video is about because, you know, the dust guards I'm doing just extra. But I'll show you guys when we go to put everything back together. They'll be in separate, separate pieces. All right, so here we are. I got everything on tie rods on uh at least on the left side of the quad i'm gonna do the right side with you guys like i said there's that brake rotor guard on there you're not gonna really see it you know because it'll be tucked in the wheel a little bit but you, you will see it at the same time if you're looking um i got all my bolts in all these bolts are in with anti seas i'll go over all that with you guys when we put the right side on i'm going to pull the right side knuckle and hub assembly apart now and I'll leave it apart and we'll put it together, you know, on video while we're doing everything. So we're in good shape, guys. Um, I'd say between the two and a half hours I spent yesterday and maybe about an hour, hour and a half today, it's not going to be too bad, man. You can do this in a few hours, you know. Uh, we'll go over. I got tools everywhere, but it's mainly all, you know, 14, 17. Uh, there's a 22 millimeter bolt um, on the end of the knuckle there but like i said you guys don't need to take your hubs off the knuckles and stuff like that unless you're doing this you know putting different uh dust guards on there and stuff but you know it's 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 more basic than how i'm doing it but you know while it's all apart i'm doing this stuff now probably gonna have to take these hubs off the knuckles again anyway because i'm gonna upgrade the rotors one cool thing i noticed taking this thing apart obviously we have our factory caliper but if you look at the brake pad that's the OEM brake pad on this, and it's got plenty of life left. So either A, the previous owner, 
when they put new pads on here, uh, went back with the OEM replacements instead of some like you know aftermarket pads, or quad could have lower hours on it. So I I'm gonna go with the low hour thing. You know, it runs really good. All the bearings and stuff, all the nothing was seized or anything on the whole quad. Um, and I was gonna show you uh, there's something that has been loose on this quad since I got it. Uh, any of you guys that are familiar with Raptors, uh, I think with the 20. 15 and up the one that goes to the single exhaust port head instead of the you know 06 to 14 with the dual exhaust ports dual exhaust port meaning there's two exhaust ports in the head uh the 15 2015 and newer has a single exhaust port i know they have like an air idle control valve or something you get that common raptor uh backfire or pop well, I think that's what contributed to what happened here. And I'll show you guys this now while we're talking. Um, you guys see the, uh, the intake boot here? That's supposed to be all the way on there. You're not supposed to be to see that shiny aluminum, but look at this. But the whole throttle body boot is loose. So um, maybe when we get this put back on the ground before I tighten that, I'll start it up and show you guys the pop that I'm talking about. It's pretty reliable. Every time I first start it, it'll do that pop and shut off. But, uh, I noticed it the other day and I seen it actually blow the throttle body off. So the only thing that's really holding it in place is the boots for the, uh, air box and everything. We're definitely gonna have to take care of that. I don't know how this thing was running the way it was. It was running damn good. Just like that. Just noticed that the other day. Um, I think Alec noticed it too when he was over here with his uh, the 400X that was Doug Eichner's race quad. If you guys haven't seen that live stream, check it out, man. That quad was really cool. But all right, <sighs> let me get this all cleaned up, guys. Let's start putting this other side on and wrap this up. All right, guys, let's start putting these A arms on the right side of the quad here. Uh, I'm going to start with the lower A arm first. Um, now is a good time while you have everything out of here. Uh, if you guys do this, you'll notice you get a bunch of buildup of like old grease and dirt all up in here. This is the time to, you know, I just took a flathead and broke it free and then just wiped it off for the most part. Um, I mean, you, I could have took it outside and power washed it and everything, but you know, I just wiped it down. Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to take, uh, we reuse our factory dust caps that come on our um, factory a arms and we're also going to reuse the bolts for everything so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our bolts here and I'm going to put some anti C's on the shank of the bolt here or the shaft and you don't need to do the whole thing because it'll push some of it off as we go so I just leave like an inch of it dry like where my fingers are now so I can grip it because I'm sure you guys know what it's like when you get anti seize on your fingers. Plus, leaving the nut on it, we could set this down on the ground without getting any dirt stuck to the anti seize. So we'll get both of these done. It's two bolts on the bottom that hold it to the frame, and then the upper A arm is one long bolt. So, all right, that's good enough. Great. I'll just drop that like that. All right. So we're gonna take our dust caps, guys. And you're going to want to make sure that you have your metal sleeves inside of the A-arms here. And you just put the cap on just like that. Put both on, obviously, so there's all four on the bottom. Let me lock these on real quick, and then I'll show you guys what they look like. So, just like that, guys, all four. And then you're going to want to line these up, slide it into the frame. Obviously, making sure you have the proper A arm in the proper location. And we'll take our factory hardware. Let me get the nut and the washer off of here. And we'll just feed these in. And we'll get that one started like that. Now we can let the A arm hang. Let me get the other nut and washer off of our other bolt here. And feed this one through as well. And then when you got them both started, they will both go all the way through. All right, so there's that. I'm just going to go ahead and loosely put our washer and lock nut factory, from factory, I mean, on there. We'll just get them started. I didn't even tighten the other side down yet, guys, the left side of the quad. I'm going to go around and do them all at one shot. All right, so next. 
and this is where you get your caster adjustment from with the Team Alba Racing. Alba, Alba, not really sure exactly what the proper wording or how you pronounce it is. So you have two different settings. So either you could put both spacers on one side like this, which would be moving the, um, uh, the, the upper A-arm forward, which would be uh, making the quad steer quicker. Um, or you could put them both to the front which would change the caster and tilt the uh, hub assembly back, which would give you more caster, which would uh, make your quad steer slower. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that the right way. One's for motocross, the other one's for uh, like desert or dune riding. I'm going to go with the factory neutral setting, which is one on each side. Also, not going to forget our dust caps in the same exact fashion. We'll go ahead and get these lined up. Let me go ahead and Annie sees our longer bolt and then we'll slide this puppy in. All right, so let's get this top A arm slid into place. And uh, your instructions for whatever quad you're putting these on will tell you which A arm goes where. Um, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the, the upper ones, at least for the Raptor 700, will fit either way uh, as long as you can see the angle. The more angled rod of the A arm goes towards the rear of the machine, hence pushing it forward a little bit. Um, a little fun fact for you guys, these A-arms for the 06 to now Raptor 700 also fit a carbureted model YFZ 450. Uh, they do not fit the uh, newer EFI ones, but so what I'm saying is my stock A-arms off of this, if I ever grab another carbureted model YFZ, which I don't think I will because I don't really like the carbureted one too well but so I gotta get these holes lined up guys and then we'll feed our bolt through which I have anti seize on obviously this is a uh, it's a little tricky sometimes it's a little tight you got to play with it a little bit but usually what I do is I try and get the the front hole lined up as best as I can and then I put the bolt in this part first, bear with me here, I'm trying to not do this off camera so you guys can see that there's a little bit of a struggle, but it's not that bad. So get our bolt started. There we go. anti seize on everything. And guys, you can see it's starting to build up the anti seize That's why I don't do the last few inches because it's going to, you know, it's going to take up some anyway. And you can see it's kind of anti seizing itself as I push it in and spin it. And then we're going to come around the back, and we'll see how our hole is lining up back here. So it's got to go up a little bit. And she should slide in. You do not want to hammer on the bolt to get it lined up, because you will damage the threads on the end of the bolt a little bit. Well, not a little bit. You'll, you'll damage them pretty good. Let me grab my little dead blow hammer here. Uh, you don't want to bang on these with a metal hammer, obviously, guys. You will mess up the finish on them. This hammer here has uh, interchangeable tips on it. This is a like a, a dense like plastic tip. So kind of it's hard to see where we're at with the uh, radiator hose and frame here in the way, but we will get it. Don't you worry about that. It's hard to see where I'm lining up here. All right, I should. There we go. Just needed a little bit of encouragement. You don't want to get it uh, to where it's not close enough for the bolt to come through, and you know you really, really damage the threads. You're gonna be having a rough day because I'm sure this bolt from Yamaha, this long upper one, is probably not cheap. It's probably a forty to sixty dollar bolt off the top of my head. So, all right, next thing, next thing, guys, we got to take off the uh, standard travel bracket that comes on the lower part of the A-arm here. Uh, it's a 14 millimeter bolt with a 14 millimeter nut. Just fits in this little tube here. So I'm gonna remove that and take our bolt for our lower ball joint off so we can release this bracket. And then that's when this other little spacer that comes in a package comes into play, just like I have it set up over there. 
So let me do that real quick, guys, and then we'll pick up and put the shock in. So here's how this uh, bracket for your standard travel shocks removes. <clears throat> There's a bolt that goes through this tube here, goes through the bracket, and then the 14 millimeter nut goes on the other side. So I got that out, and then this bolt here that goes to the lower ball joint is a 19 millimeter. So we're gonna remove this. And like I said, guys, if you're gonna run your stock standard travel Raptor shocks, whether it be the base model, like these shocks are, or the SE or Type R, or Type R, listen to me, I'm talking like Honda Civic shit. Um, the uh, 700R or the RSE, comes with the piggyback shocks. Uh, they're all the same length, so if you're gonna run your stock shocks, you would leave this bracket in place, like it is, like that, just how they come. But you guys know we're going to the other shocks, so now we're gonna take this other little spacer that comes in there. You notice it's tapered on one side and the other side has a little inlet part there. So that, the inlet part goes in, and the tapered side is what you left seeing. And you take your bolt, put it back in, and just set this down to the torque setting that Alba specifies. We'll go over all the torque specs at the end, guys. I'll give you all those. I still have to look up the torque specs for the uh, A-arms myself, like the factory bolts that hold it on and the shock bolts and everything. So... All right, now you would reuse this bolt that you took out to hold the bottom of your shock in. I always like to put the bolts in from the front to the back. Um, just, you know, in case you ever lose a nut out in the woods, it'd be a lot harder for it to go against the direction you're going and come out than it would if it was, you know, just out the back and then fall right out because, you know, obviously the quad would be going forward. Hence, you know, pushing the bolts still to stay where they're at. But we're going to use, you know, it comes with a lock washer, so it should be fine. That's just how I set things up. But, all right, let me uh, get our shock ready, put you guys back on the tripod, and then we'll get that fed through the top A-arm and into the shock bolt location and hang it from the frame location as well. All right, let's put our shock in, guys. I'm trying to keep you in the shot as best as I can here. So, we have our YFZ shock. We got our factory bolt already in the hole, ready to go. So, I'm going to take this and get this fed through the upper A-arm. And then we'll just set our bolt in here. I'm not going to tighten anything down yet. Let's get that sitting where it goes. Get our nut started so we don't lose that. Alright, now the upper A-arm, I'm going to wrap a wire around this and just get it up and out of our way for a little bit because we're not ready to put our knuckle on yet so this is just a piece of tracer wire um, just to keep stuff up out of the way i'm just going to link it up here to the front brake lever just to hold it that's out of our way now we don't have to worry about it dangling or smacking into anything and we'll pull these out to where they line up. Actually, this lower adjustment setting on the shock should be facing the opposite direction. So let me spin this around. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in a second if you can't see it in the shot here. And we'll get this lined up. We'll stick our bolt through. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here, but you guys know what I'm saying. So, all right. Let me get you guys off the tripod here and show you what we just did. So there's a adjustment at the bottom of the shock. If you guys can see that right here. This is supposed to face towards the center of the quad. Same as the other one on the other side. Um, reason being, when the wheel and everything's on there, you couldn't get to this adjustment, you know, with the wheel here and the hub and the brake rotor and knuckle and everything all in the way. So basically, if you guys couldn't see anything, just got the bolt up there, and I just got the bolt fed through this lower part of the A-arm through the shock. Now we're ready to put our 14 millimeter nut on. So I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick with some Loctite, and uh, then we'll start putting our knuckle on. All right, let's get our upper ball joint on. So out of the package, this is what this looks like. You got your nylock nut on the end, and then you got your jam nut here. 
Uh, I'll start out with the jam nut all the way up to the ball joint. We'll take care of our uh, camber later on in the video, which, I mean, that's a personal preference thing, so I'll give you guys a rundown on how to set your camber and, you know, what basic uh, settings you should run at, but, you know, that's all personal preference stuff and depends on what type of riding you're doing and everything, so, like I said, I'll just give you a rundown on that stuff, guys, but I'll set it the way I like it uh, off camera. So, with this jam nut all the way down, go ahead and just slide this through. And we'll just get our lock nut started on the other end so it's held in place. If the threads will start here. Okay. There we go. Alright, so we're down to the nylock part so that ain't coming off. Alright, now we can go ahead and remove the nylocks and washers that come on the end of the ball joints and put those to the side for a second. Get it off the bottom one as well. And then we'll take our knuckle here that I just got done cleaning as best as I could. And we'll go ahead and put it on our lower ball joint first. Take our washer, put that on. Now the nylock, get that started. And the same thing for the top guys, what we'll do is we'll break the seal on it real quick so it moves around and flexes good as well as the bottom one now the knuckles on get that pushed in there like that same deal put our washer on first and then our bolt or uh, our nylock nut sorry not bolt nut get that started all right uh, i'm not going to tighten these things down until the end guys when we run around and do everything uh Next thing I'm gonna do, let's go over to the bench and we'll set up our other tie rod with the tie rod ends. All right, so over here at the bench. So the tie rod ends I got from BFE fam. I get those on eBay guys, they're like 40 to 50 bucks for a set and they are chromoly. You'll notice one has a regular color lock nut the other one has a gold color lock nut. The gold color lock nut is reverse thread. So if you look at the tie rod, See these two little flat spots here that you can hold back with a wrench? Those are usually your the side that gets the regular right hand thread. So we'll go ahead and back these up, these lock nuts, these stay on. We'll back these all the way up. Bear with me, I'm doing this one handed here. And we're gonna screw these in on both sides. And we're gonna screw them all the way into the jam nut. So all the way. This way, when we set our, uh, uh, what the hell is, the toe on the quad, um, and we do the alignment and everything, you don't want to have this one all the way in and then take the adjustment just out on the other side and have like two or three threads. You want it to equally come out, both of them at the same time, so you can set your, do your alignment and everything. So you want them to be even. It's not safe to only have like one or two threads in. All right, so putting our tie rods in uh, on the Raptor 700, eh, most quads, uh, up by your steering stem flag, it goes from the top in, and then down by the knuckle, it goes from the bottom up. So we got our castle nut and our washer on there, and what I do before I do this, guys, uh, I'll put, like, how this is in just one end right now, I'll stick it in there, and then break the seal of the uh, tie rod end free. Otherwise, you know, they're kind of tight to, you know, Get this to move with just your finger so i just break them free so it's easier to get them to maneuver and do what i want them to do so they line up good so let me grab the uh washer and nut here i'm gonna put our washer on like that let me see if i can hold you guys and do this at the same time and we'll get our castle nut started nice and up close and personal video style <laughs> all right so now that that's like that and like i said before guys we'll go around and tighten all this stuff after now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put my uh aftermarket dust shield on with some uh thread locker i'm going to use red loctite i know a lot of people say oh no don't use red loctite because you'll never get it apart again bullshit you can get it back apart guys if you only use a little tiny tiny dot on the threads you don't have to worry about fighting it to get it off and if you need to you could heat it up and break them free now you heat up the the loctite and then crank on it 
it'll come back off. Don't worry about it. Anybody that says that probably doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, but all right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this puppy on, and uh, let's see what else we got. What else we got? I gotta put the uh, the hub back on the knuckle, the brake caliper, and then uh, I'll get the torque specs for everything for us, and we'll tighten this thing up and see what she looks like on the ground. Tires back on it. All right, guys. So I just stood back and took a look at this thing. It looks pretty sick, man. Looks it looks really good. I'm gonna show it to you guys here, and then uh, I'm gonna go um, <clears throat> look up all the torque specs for everything, and then I'll point to each bolt and tell you what each, what each one's torque specification should be. And uh, I'm gonna put my brakes on, brake lines. Uh, you guys, brake lines are simple, man. I'm just taking them where they used to be and running the new ones in. It's not a big deal. Uh, so I'm gonna do that off camera so we can get this wrapped up. This is probably a pretty damn long video. Um, we're not talking about brake lines anyway. This is the A arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but check this thing out real quick, man, before we put it back down on the ground. Bam! She's uh she's getting pretty damn wide, man. Looks looks really good, guys. Here's those aftermarket dust shields that I got, the rotor guards there. I think it's a nice little touch. Also, matches our little uh ring here on the YFZ R front shocks. Um <clears throat> something I should actually tell you guys man the the stock raptor 700 shock you can get uh yfz 450 shocks from the carbureted model like these up here these are shorter than the efi model so only if you go to the efis you have to do like a long travel a-arm setup like we did here um here let me see if i can hold this up next to it so you guys can see there's pretty damn close with the length so you know it's there, you, you can directly swap these if you wanted to, or I could even run those with the uh, Team Alba Racing, uh, the brackets that came on the A-arms, those there. You know, those, the carbureted model YFZ shocks are a hell of a lot better than these stock, um, just base model Raptor 700 front shocks. All right, let me clean up my tools. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna run my brake lines and start getting my wheels on, and I'll look up the torque specs and go over all those with you, and we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, so I was uh, about to look up the torque specifications for all these nuts and bolts, and I'm like, you can't be very far off from a Raptor 660 uh, setup, considering the A-arms and everything are pretty much the same, you know, like the, the long bolt on top and then the two on the bottom. So opened up my cabinet here and went for one of my manuals. Uh, I have one for a Raptor 660. You guys can see which, uh, which manual I use the most. It's all worn in and everything, the 400X one. So I got the Raptor 661 out. So let's, uh, you know, and this is a good time for me to say, guys, if you're wanting exact stuff, I'm pretty sure these are very similar. And I'm not going to tighten any of these nuts and bolts down, especially to go to, like, the suspension and everything. You want the weight of the quad to be on everything when you go to tighten everything. Or you could possibly have squeaks if you just tighten everything with it jacked up in the air like that. So let's go over what the Raptor 660 torque specs are, um, you know, like I said, d double check or, you know, have a Raptor 700 manual if, you know, you're that worried about it. Um, usually I would just tighten these by hand, guys, but, you know, being this is a YouTube video, we'll go over some torque specs, even though they could possibly be wrong, so just double check, but this is what I have, you know, at my disposal right now, so this is what we're going to go with. All right, so let's see what we got here. We've got... This is chapter 11 for the uh, suspension and steering. So let's see here, ball joint nuts. So 18 foot pounds. So this one and this one here, 18. Next we have the brush guards, we're not worried about that. Front brake caliper, mounting bolts, 21 foot pounds. So the two that hold the caliper to the knuckle are 21 foot pounds. Front brake master cylinder. Front wheel hub nut, 52 foot pounds. So the outer one here, I usually do this by feel anyway, guys. I, I tighten it down to where it feels like it's starting to have the slightest amount of drag on spinning, and then I'll put my cotter pin through. So we're not gonna follow that anyway. Let's see, front lug nuts, they got it for 33 foot pounds on the 660. Handlebar, lower control arm nuts. So where are we at here? 32, so 24. 24 foot pounds for these down on the bottom 
Um, let's see here. Shock, absor shock absorber mounting nuts. 33 foot pounds. Is that the right one? Yeah, 33 foot pounds. So for the shock bolt at the top and bottom, 33 foot pounds. Uh, steering shaft bearing, we're not doing that. Steering shaft nut, we're not doing that. Steering shaft tie rod nuts. All right, so the tie rods, these parts here are going to be going to 18 foot pounds and then upper control arm nut. So the upper one, 28 foot pounds. Like I said, guys, I, I usually do these by hands, but by hand. So um, that's more than likely what I'm going to do. But I'll go with the torque specs on this. Keep in mind, like I said, this is a manual for a Raptor 660, but it's the same setup. So, you know, take that how you want. So, all right, let me uh, get the wheels on this thing, and I'll put it on the ground, and then we'll tighten everything. Also, I got my brake lines on, and I did brake line clamps. Most people just run run one brake line clamp. I like to run two on each side. I think it's a little cleaner looking and you get a little bit more control out of it and it holds the line where you want it. Here's the other side over here. And those are also by Team Alba Racing. Let me put the wheels on this thing, get on the ground, and then we'll talk about camber, caster, you know, toe, all that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I set it the way I like it, so it's like a controversial thing. You guys set it up for your riding style and how you want. I'll just give you a rundown on how to set everything and then you know we'll end the video and i'll piece you guys out all right guys she's down on the ground it's substantially substantially wider than it was you know obviously but it looks friggin mean man it's it's, sit, it's sitting as wide as the yfz that i have maybe a hair wider um it's a little lower than i would like it to sit right now but i didn't do any adjustments to the shocks i didn't do any of that stuff yet guys i actually might leave it at this height and get a lowering kit for the rear like a whole new linkage setup one that i can adjust the height on because i kind of like it like this um you know even for the trail riding around here it still has plenty of clearance probably about the same amount as a 400x would have sitting on the ground and also on the front of the quad i'm sitting on 21 inch wheels guys i could go to 22s i actually have a set here you know i could get another half inch of clearance that way but i kind of like it like this so i'd like to get the rear to match um is usually a good rule of thumb uh for the way a quad sits like uh the rake of it or whatever as long as the logo that's in the side of the engine case, kind of like on the 465 here, see where it says Honda embossed into the clutch cover. As long as that's level with the ground, the, the ride height's pretty much where you want it from there. Um, you know, it's a good rule of thumb to go with if you ever do like a, a different engine in a different frame. You know, you could start with that and keep it level with the bottom of the frame. But let's take a look at this thing, man. I didn't put the plastics on yet, so let's go over the camber and caster, how you would go about setting that. And then I'll put the plastics back on, and we'll end the video with a cool little walk around of it. Here it is, man. Look at this thing, guys. She is, looks like a damn grasshopper, you know? It's going to be sick. I cannot wait to do the rest of the shit to this and get this quad back out in the woods. So let's talk about the settings here. So your camber setting would be, you know, how far in the wheel tilts in like this. Usually you want to start with it square, 90 degrees from the ground, and then go an eighth of an inch in at the top. That's a, a good basic setting. Um, the toe, meaning the way that the wheels are kicked in like this or like this, um, you know, it's all preference, but usually about maybe a... a just a hair in at the front of the wheel, so kind of pigeon-toed in. Some people run with them a little pigeon-toed out. Like I said, it's all preference, man. Uh, we talked about the caster settings with the spacers in the top A-arm. How I have it set is the neutral position right now. Um, what other settings are there? Obviously, your alignment, that's your toe. That gets done with your tie rods. Um, yeah. There she is, guys. So I'm going to slap the plastics back on. And then I'll piece you guys out and end with a walk around. All right, guys. So thank you for watching this long video. I hope this was helpful to one of you guys. Don't forget my promo code over at TeamAlbaRacing.com is GMC10. Save yourself 10% on one thing, 10 things, everything, whatever you want to order. Uh, if you have not yet, throw me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, you know what to do. Don't forget to turn notifications on. Drop comments, guys. I'll read and answer every single one of my comments. I do not just hit you with a thumbs up. I take the time to comment. I take the time to read and answer you. 
I'll see you guys in the garage next time.